If you're wondering the tools, this is a very simple Harbor Freight uh, one inch belt sander. Uh, also, if you're wondering the belt grit, uh, I said medium, that's kind of stupid because it's actually not a medium. Uh, the belt that I was using was actually with the 240, um, 240 grit bit, uh, or a belt, sorry, grit, whatever. Um, you can see where it's kind of worn smooth. I'm gonna actually go with a 220. I want a little bit more of an aggressive cut on this. Um, obviously, you're gonna have to pay way more close attention because you can easily uh, start to gouge the barrel and nick it, and then your actual time uh, cleaning up your fuck up is gonna take a lot longer, and you're really not gonna be happy about that. Um, so I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna go with a, with a more of an aggressive uh, cut uh, on this, um, but I'll actually get the work done a bit faster if I can get this thing back together. Um, you know, metal working, you don't need super expensive tools. You need decent quality tools. Um, a lot of it is actually just patience, taking your time, you know. I, I personally wouldn't recommend working on something. I mean, these are not super rare, but this is a 1931-day Japanese Nambu. You know, I believe that this thing deserves to be put back to its original, you know, state. Um, you know, I mean, if you got an old junky Turkish Mauser or something that you don't really mind if you screw up or a Mosin a gun, I know the Mosin people are going to be screaming at me, um, then by all means, or even a piece of metal sometimes, you can just leave it out, let it get messed up or find metal in a junkyard, and you can start practicing some of your techniques. I'm doing this a while, so obviously I'm a little more confident with it. Um, but yeah, I would le definitely reserve any harder to find guns or more collectible guns. Uh, I would definitely either leave that to an expert um, or practice a lot before you start getting into this because you can, you know, you hear the, you may hear the term Bubba, people have screwed guns up in unbelievable ways. So I would definitely recommend a little bit, a lot of practice, especially with draw filing, metal filing, metal finishing, because unfortunately you can't put metal back. Once it's gone, it's gone. Same thing as sanding stocks. So again, something to keep in mind, another one of my useful tidbits. Okay. So, um, with the aggressive, the, this is a 220. Uh, with the more aggressive grit I've gotten in um, to the barrel, uh, I've smoothed most all of the pits out. There might be a couple of tiny ones here and there. Um, the whole idea of the belt sander is not to get this perfectly killer finish. Um, that you're actually going to do by hand because you have more of a degree of control. Obviously, the belt sander can't get in there because of the fact that, well, it's just going to start grinding off all these lugs and your gun's going to become junk. Um, you will, you may notice some rippling in the finish. It's from just going back and forth. Uh, you know, sometimes you might have a tiny bit more pressure here, whereas not enough pressure here, whatever. So you may get these ripples. Now, the beautiful thing with uh, the hand finishing aspect, oh, by the way, all those pits are pretty much mostly gone. Let's see, where we at? Yeah. Uh, you may see one or two small ones. Again, that's a trade-off. If you want to try to cut that one a little bit more, you can. It's totally up to you. Um, you know, you can also get in here with a Dremel. I don't like using Dremels in areas like this only because you can't necessarily control um, the amount of pressure unless you have a Dremel mounted like say in a drill press and then you can kind of go in and you can hand do it. Again, this area you can see where I kind of nicked it a little bit, no big deal. I didn't cut into the metal that much right there. Uh, but this can all be finished by hand because I want to maintain that very sharp barrel contour. Uh, again, the mark of a crappy rebluing job or a crappy metal finishing job is that all your shit's all rounded off, your screw holes are dished out, your markings are gone. Um, yeah, that just sucks. Um, so again, this is you know this is probably about as high polish as they were going to go. Um, what I'm going to do um, is move everything over into the barrel vise or into the vise itself, sorry, and I'm going to show you how I do. You know, basically what you're going to do with this is you're going to use your sanding block. Um, and you're just going to start blending and you start blending the areas um, between the parts that were polished by the belt sander and the parts that are still uh, in the rough basically from the bead blasting. Uh, what you'll do, like I said, you'll clamp it in. I'll just show you. It's probably easier. So hold on. All right. The next step. I guess you got this at Harbor Freight. Where'd it go? There it is. I got this at Harbor Freight. Uh, I don't see them anymore, but I can probably get them on eBay. Uh, it's a roll of sanding paper. Uh, 150, 240, 320, and 400. On this one, I'm gonna probably go finer. Oh, maybe I'm not, because I'm almost out. So I'm gonna use a 320. And what I'm gonna do is, again, you can see the areas between the polished and non-polished. Uh, the sanding block sometimes will leave scuffs. So what you can do, let me actually move this. 
Oh, I picked these up on eBay, uh, these blocks. They're great. Let me back this up just a little bit. There we go. These things are great because you can clamp the shit out of your part and it's not going to scratch it. Some people use an old t-shirt and whatnot. I've done that in the past. It does kind of suck. They're like five bucks. Uh, the vice I got from Lowe's, I think I paid like $50 for it. It's a six, it's a heavy duty vice, whatnot. Um, anyway, so when you're blending this, you're just doing sort of a shoe shine motion. And what you're doing is you're sort of picking up where the belt sander uh, left off, except you're basically going in by hand and you're blending these areas um, to give it a nice uniform matte finish. Again, anything that anything that you that you do to this metal uh, is going to show up in your final finish. So this is where really good prep is the key to getting the most accurate uh, and the most smooth uh, original finish out of your part. Uh, and you just kind of want to rotate it a little bit. You know, again, you don't have to go crazy with it, but you're just gonna kind of lightly polish it and you're gonna blend all those areas in kind of a shoe shine motion. And you're gonna do it to your level of satisfaction Okay, so let's see if you can see this. Um, I have to get in here more by hand, obviously. Um, and this will actually knock down that sort of rough finish uh, on the metal. Um, I'm gonna hit this area here. You may or may not be able to see it. I really hope this thing's in focus, but uh, it's kind of a ripple uh, in the metal. And that was from the, uh, the uh, brain fart. The belt sander. Again, just take that and just polish that. Sorry about that, I was having some difficulty. Okay, so we got a 400. And I'm gonna polish, 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 polish. Um, some people have asked me if you can use oil on this. It's, these are these are basically like uh, wet sand. These are this is emery cloth, so you can, you know, you can apply a, like a, a sort of a um, lubricating material if you like. The only thing I don't like about adding anything to this is that you're going to have to take it off later. You're going to want this thing uh, as clean as possible. Um, slight adjustment, so you see what the hell I'm doing. There we go. And I'm hoping that my camera's autofocus is actually catching this and not trying to focus on my hands going back and forth, which it has done in the past. Anyway, the shoe shine motion uh, is going to basically smooth any of those kind of lightly rough areas out. If you want even higher polish, you know, you can use a 1500 grit, uh, 800 grit, you know, whatever other grits you can find. Um, you know, to put a uh, progressively finer kind of polish on the parts. Uh, something you can also use uh, if you get this thing really brightly polished, uh, you can use one of these. There's synthetic steel wool pads, and you can actually just use this to knock down all those high air at the high areas, but those slightly uneven areas. And it sort of makes, you know, again, gives you that nice uh, matte kind of look to your steel uh, without uh, leaving any marks. Any one of these grades will work. Um, and these a lot of times will level out the surface from uh, either overly aggressive sanding where you left some scratches, because metal does scratch. And getting scratches out of metal sucks. Um, I know because I've done it. Uh, and again, you can polish this up as much as you want. You can even use steel wool if you want. Uh, you're going to degrease all this thoroughly, so it's not going to matter too much. Um, but ideally, you know, you don't want to leave a ton of marks that you have to remove later. 
Um, I'm hoping the light is actually catching this. Hoping it's catching something. Um, so you can see, like again, you know, this was pretty heavily pitted. The pits are about, I would say, 95% gone. I'll have to get up in here by hand, clean this area up and blend it. You can still see some pitting up in there. It's gonna be a little tricky because I don't want to ruin that barrel contour right there, a little edge. Um, this I'll just do by hand. Um, you know, I'll smooth a lot of these areas out. Um, and then when it's done, I'm gonna degrease it thoroughly. I'm actually gonna leave the inside of this in the white. I probably may go in uh, later on and just hit it with a um, uh, stainless steel brush uh, with the Dremel because these are actually polished on the inside. So I'll probably just polish this inside out so it's not too rough because the actual action of the, the bolt going in and out is gonna polish it up a little bit, but I don't wanna put any more wear on the bolt either than I have to. Um, oh, I'll show you draw filing real quick, two seconds. Okay, real quick, touching on draw filing. Um, there were a couple of small areas that I nicked right in here. You can't really, probably can't even see them from there. But what I'm gonna do, I have these, uh, these jeweler's files, um, and then I have my carding brush. Come on, focus the, card, the carding brush. I'll go back here. Um, the thing with draw filing is you wanna keep your file clean. Now, the problem is if it picks up particles, um, it's going to actually uh, rake them across the surface. Uh, you can draw a file on something like this and you can remove pitting the same way I did. Uh, it's a lot more tedious. It's a lot, you have to be very, very careful because you literally have to go move, 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 clean. Um, some people will actually clean their file in between passes. So what you're basically going to do, you're just going to take it and you're not going to put a lot of pressure. You're just going to kind of draw it toward you. And you're going to let um, the actual file do the work. And what this does, this very minutely removes uh, some of the metal uh, where it was slightly damaged and you can actually clean some areas up. Where the sanding belt nicked uh, just a little bit, you know, again, I'm just looking to restore the edge. Uh, and then after I'm done restoring the edge, then what I'm going to do is again, hand polish, hand polish, hand polish to get everything back uh, uniform. Um, and, you know, move your work around if you need a better, you know, I'm kind of doing this so you guys can see. Um, again, very tedious work. It, I really actually hate draw filing uh, just because it takes a lot of time. Um, but it's, once you've mastered this, um, it's great for cleaning up, like I said, little areas and whatnot. That actually big areas you can do it with a much larger file. I would use like a, uh, like a mill file. Uh, you want the cross cut files to where they tend uh, not the cross cut. I'm sorry, the the brain farting on the name. I'm not with it today. Uh, or it, it doesn't remove as much um, material as quickly, so you actually can keep kind of a finer edge and things can stay a little bit uh, smoother as opposed to using. Uh, a file that is going to uh, cut a lot of material off of your part uh, and then actually sometimes leave you with more damage than it's worth. This is not going to affect uh, the operation of the pistol, uh, but that little nick may show up. Uh, where are we at? There we are. Focus, focus. Come on. Oh, this camera's insufferable today. There we go. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm cleaning up this lip right here. There was a couple of areas that are a little, oops, there we go. There are a couple areas that are a little slightly uneven. Um, I can actually, will go in there, there, and put a, a more of an edge on that with the file. And I'll just basically clamp it and then just keep cleaning it up until, you know, it's where I'm happy with it. Um, overall, uh, you can probably see the barrel a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, overall, I'm very happy with this. You know, it was really badly pitted from when we started, and it's actually nice and smooth. I can get the smoothness down even further, uh, clean this up a bit, and then blend this area. Because, uh, you know, I mean, this is going to be under uh, the metal line in the frame, but I want this thing to be as polished and as uniform as possible. A lot of this can be hit with a wire brush as well uh, on a bench grinder. You can just kind of just run it real quick 
and it will, uh, again, it'll try, kind of uniform this area up. Uh, you can even hit this area with, uh, with a bench grinder uh, with a wheel as well, and it'll do the exact same thing. Like, I'm going to hit that right now and bring it back in one sec. Hold on. All right, so this is after a couple minutes on the bench grinder. Um, what I did was I blended in... Sorry. Uh, I blended in this area. Um, the line between there and there is a lot less noticeable. I'm going to put this on autofocus. Actually, I'm not liking this. Um, so I cleaned this area up. Uh, you see since I'm pitting up in here, you may not be able to see it, I can see where I'm standing. Um, and then I'm actually, I was just kind of hitting it with this uh, to sort of blend the areas from uh, the wire wheel. Uh, I just use a stainless, or a, a standard stainless wire wheel on my, uh, my bench grinder. Um, nice even pressure to kind of blend everything in. Uh, again, a couple areas there that need to kind of be touched up a little bit. I can touch those up by hand uh, and then blend some more. Um, again, from when we started, this thing was pretty badly pitted. There's still a little bit of pitting under the barrel that I could probably get out uh, with, uh, with some more of the bell sander. You know, if I'm going to go this far, I kind of want this thing to look as nice as possible. Um, you know. Um, so yeah, and, you know, for me, I want to make this thing perfect. Uh, actually, I'll end up polishing this out by hand with uh, my Dremel and a stainless steel brush. Same thing as in here, uh, and it'll just bring those areas up. This is all going to get rust blued as well, uh, with the exception of the inside. The inside, I'm just going to run a wire brush through here uh, on the Dremel. Again, I don't like the Dremel as much for outside work, but sometimes it's almost unavoidable. Again, the problem is you'll have you running with the Dremel is just keeping the pressure even. Like the here, I would never use a Dremel. Uh, in this area because you'll end up with little little scallops and and gouges and stuff in your metal because you're not going to get that precise um, You know uh, motion with it. Uh, this also sort of knocks down um, The roughness of the uh, the bead blasting so you can see the numbers which is 662 um, And then there's also a small arsenal mark and up in there once I polish that out There's another arsenal mark uh, that was put on these by the Tokyo Arsenal uh, back in the 30s when these things were built. So um, I think that's about it. Like I said, it needs some final polish, but it gives you the rough idea of how belt sanding uh, carefully and correctly can actually remove a lot of surface issues uh, in a gun prior to refinishing. Uh, you can take something, you know, again, that was kind of thrashed and you can make it look almost brand new again uh, just with some, you know, time and effort and some patience and just some careful prep work um, you know, so from here, like I said, it'll be you know, final polish. I have a couple more areas I'm going to blend and hit, and then uh, it's going to get thoroughly degreased, and it'll go uh, to the rust blue process. All right, so thanks for watching.